Welcome everyone to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about Inventing Anna, Season 1, Episode 1, it's called Life of a VIP. It is a first episode, so I will be starting spoiler free. I imagine most of this will be spoiler free, honestly, but I'll give you a warning before I do give any any spoiler details. Uh, this was another show that was on the Patreon pilot tier list that was uh, fairly high up, so that's why I'm doing it. It is a new Netflix show. Um, it comes from Shonda Rhimes, who is a very prolific TV executive and producer who has produced a bunch of shows on network TV and then made a big deal with Netflix a couple of years ago, and all of her stuff is coming from Netflix now. Um, I have never seen a single thing that Shonda Rhimes has made until this episode. So I, I didn't... Like, I kind of had a vague expectation just based on people talking about her other shows, but I didn't really know what it was going to be like. I didn't really know what her stuff felt like. Uh, because it mostly came from network TV originally, none of it really appealed to me from the outset. Uh, this, of course, though, you know, and some of our other recent things have been straight to streaming, and you know, it's a very different potential uh, tone, different potential uh, type of content that's being made. So I'm very curious to see how, how I felt about this. I have to admit, though, that I wasn't necessarily thinking that I was probably going to be in love with it. And having now watched the first episode of Inventing Anna, which I'll give you the premise of in just a second, I, I would say that it's very slick, it's fairly well made, it has witty characters, uh, I mean the wit is kind of, you know, maybe to your taste, it's a little bit subjective, but th there's definitely characters who have little ticks and quirks, and the way they talk is a little bit fast, it's, you know, it's not quite uh, Aaron Sorkin levels, but there is a bit of a a bite and like back and forth in the dialogue that kind of made me think of that a little bit uh, which is funny because the name Sorkin does actually pop up in this episode it's one of Anna's aliases um so yeah so so it's perfectly well done for for what it is but yeah it's definitely not for me like I, I didn't think it would be for me and it's kind of a weird thing to sit down and review something when I'm like this is perfectly good at what it's doing but it's not necessarily something that I particularly I'm that invested in or want to watch more. Uh, and there's also one... I don't know if it's... In, I'm assuming is. I think it's unintentional, but I, I don't necessarily think that it's out of the realm of possibility that there's something intentional that made me laugh early on. It's, so, probably unintentional, but I'll explain why I think it, there's a chance it could be intentional in a second. But the premise of the show, before I get to that, the premise of the show... Is that this mysterious young woman named Anna has been arrested for effectively fraud? Um, she's she's been staying at a lot of fancy hotels. She's been running up bills at a lot of places. She's got a lot of aliases with different last names, and she's kind of a, a socialite. She at least that's what they're saying about her. She's posting on Instagram all the time. She has a lot of expensive clothes, all that kind of thing. But she's kind of a mystery. No one really knows who she is or where she came from. Uh, she's foreign, she is possibly Russian, but possibly not, and the main character of the show is actually a reporter um, by the name of Vivian, who sort of catches her, the story catches her interest when it's, she's, she's being sentenced, uh, you know, well, she, she, she gets her hearing for bail or not, and she's told she's not going to get bail because she's a flight risk, and she's going to Rikers. And so at this point early on in the story where Vivian kind of like really tries to plead with her bosses at her... Uh, or, or publication, whatever it may be. Was it a newspaper? I think I think it was. I'm not sure. Uh, but she is determined that there's a story here. She thinks there's a story. She tries to talk to Anna a few times. And it's about her trying to sort of uncover the mystery of who Anna is, why she has done what she's done, if any of it is actually illegal. Uh, because Anna's story is that, you know, she does have all this money. She's paid for many of these things. And there's, there's no problem. Um... So yeah, it's, so it's kind of it's 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 like a courtroom show in a sense because there's going to be a trial, but there's going to be a lot of mystery uncovered about who she is and all of the weird connections and mysterious friends she's made in her past, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of uncovering of that kind of thing. And um, this first episode is you know like a lot of first episodes is setting up this premise, so it's largely convincing Anna uh, from Vivian's perspective to stay involved with her and want to do interviews and want to be a story and you know arriving at what her motivation is for that 
um, but also the motivation for Vivian for de being determined to get this story because she has some stuff in her past which has kind of ruined her career a little bit and she sees this as her chance to you know get back on the horse and really sort of uh, reclaim her integrity as a journalist. So that that's kind of your, your main setup. The thing that made me laugh early on there's a little montage at the start of the episode showing her being arrested and kind of some of her first responses to being arrested. Uh, this is Anna we're talking about. And I heard her talk. And hearing her talk made me laugh because she sounds... <laughs> she sounds a lot like Tommy Wiseau. And one of the first sentences that came out of her mouth... Because I was already thinking, there's, there's maybe like two lines of dialogue and then the third line is actually like a... The first two lines, I was already thinking, she sounds a bit like Tommy Wiseau. The third line of dialogue, and I'm, you know, give or take, like, I, I didn't count, but give or take, like, the third or fourth line of dialogue is her saying the sentence, this is bullshit. And that is a line that Tommy Wiseau says in the room. So, I was already in my head connecting the accent and going, this is very Tommy Wiseau sounding. So when I heard this is bullshit, I thought, oh dear, like now I'm really thinking about Tommy Wiseau. So now every time she talks, I'm thinking Tommy Wiseau. And it was kind of making it hard to take her scenes a little bit seriously. So I think this is unintentional, probably. But I will say there there is like a, a smidge of a reason why it might not be. Because part of this, the mystery of this, this character is that she does seem to be filthy rich in some way. And no one knows where her money comes from. Uh, part of the story of the episode is that when Vivian goes to interview a bunch of people who interacted with her in the past few months or years, they all have different stories as to how Anna has a fortune to spend. You know, some think that her family had this, this uh, expensive painting that they were going to sell for millions of dollars. Some think other things. There's all these kind of like socialites and hoity-toity people uh, who say things like, oh, she's too ugly to not be rich. She had to be rich because you can't survive in our world if you look like that and aren't rich. And, you know, you know shitty statements like that. It was it's very, um, you know, in The Dark Knight, how the Joker, like, tells a different origin story <laughs> to everyone that asks him. <laughs> it's kind, it's kind of like that, but with with her where her money comes from. And the reason why this might be a tangible link to Tommy Wiseau is because Tommy Wiseau spent millions of dollars making the room and no one like like he claims he made this money from selling i think it was leather jackets right and he has like a business um but there's always been a bit of a mystery as to just how much money he has and like how he was able to afford what he did when he made that movie um it's you know, it's, it's been one of the, and it's one of these long-running things. It maybe it's not actually that mysterious, but I feel like the internet has made it this myth. Like we talk about Tommy Wiseau, and it's like, where did he really come from? No one really knows because he won't admit what country he's from. Uh, he says he's from New Orleans. You know, that's the that's the joke. Um, no one knows where his money came from. So, like, there is a possibility here that this character, there may be a loose inspiration <laughs> from Tommy Wiseau. And if there isn't, then the parallels were uncanny to me, and it's all I could think about whenever Anna was talking, or whenever we were talking about the mystery of where her income came from. Um, that that's all I could think about. Obviously, it's you know it's a different type of character in the sense that she's you know, on Instagram, she's wearing super expensive clothes, um, she and she's she keeps saying that she's a businesswoman. She's not a socialite, and that's that's one of the big things about her character is that she wants to show everyone that she isn't just some dumb socialite who wants to like you know, pose and wear fancy things on social media, that she's a legitimate businesswoman. And even that sounds a little bit like Tommy Wiseau. Not not the Instagram and socialite part, but the idea that he, like, is like, no, we're making a real movie, we're, we're doing this, you know, I, I like, how he, how he takes himself seriously when everyone else kind of sees it. Now, I'm sure, I don't expect it's going to go down that path. I suspect the mystery is going to kind of reveal that there's, she's a lot smarter than people are probably giving her credit for. But the parallels to Tommy Wiseau, I was not prepared for. And it was a big part of this episode for me that honestly made it probably, like, five times more entertaining than it would have been for me otherwise. And it's not that the show is not well done, it's not that the characters aren't likable enough. Uh, like I say, they got a bit of wit to them. Uh, Vivian's relationship with her, her husband, you know, she's pregnant and that's part of her character uh, story of the show. And she's trying to, like, sort of, like, save her career before she has to take time off to give birth. Uh, so she's on a bit of a clock, right? A natural clock. Um, 
So you, you've got that element to it, and they're, they're, they're like, sort of back and forth is, is kind of nice. Um, likewise, the lawyer who's representing Anna is this, you know, he's a lawyer who's out and out of his depth. He's never had a big client like this before. And he, when they offer a plea deal, he kind of knows it's probably the best thing for it to, to do, right? If he really looks at it with logic. But on the one hand, he's also, on the other hand, he's also thinking, but... Like, if I do this, if, if this goes to trial, if Anna decides to take this to trial, uh, which is the big question of the episode is, will Anna, you know, take the plea deal or go to trial, right? That's the, what the big thing of the episode's about. And I don't think it's a spoiler to say that ultimately she's going to decide to go to trial, because otherwise there'd be no show, right? <laughs> like if she took the plea deal, the show would be over, there'd be no season. But she, there's all this lingering. So the lawyer is this kind of, like, likable schlub who's in over his head, and seems well-intentioned enough. Like, there's actually one really good scene with him and his wife, where he kind of talks about how, because his wife's quite rich and comes from a rich family, and he kind of feels like whenever he's hanging out with her, with like all of her, like, social circle, he still feels, no matter how expensive his tuxedo is, because he says his tuxedo that he wears is worth more than most people make in a month. And despite that fact, he still feels like he doesn't belong there. He still feels like he should be the valet or something, and that he is in and out of his depth. And... But it never comes across in like a sort of like a uh, superficial way to me. He he kind of feels like a nice enough genuine dude who just feels like yeah. He's, he's, and his his wife just kind of sits and listens to him. And it it's you know it, like some of the drama you could have like taken out of this with her reaction wasn't there. She was just supportive and listened. It was actually kind of nice and refreshing to be honest. Um, but he's likable enough. Um, and you know his reaction by the end of the episode when Anna does make the choice to not take the plea deal and say, no, we're going to do this. Or we're going to clear my goddamn name. People are going to know who I am. I'm Anna, bitch. Um, he, like, you know, he has this little smirk in his face. And it's a well-done moment. You kind of feel like, okay, like all the plot threads that they're trying to build up in this first episode kind of coalesce. And we have built our main cast of characters. Uh, some of the people that Vivian interviews, there's two of them who we see meet together a couple of times in the episode and act kind of mysterious and talk kind of weird, like they're, like they're part of the mystery, like they may be villainous. So they're kind of playing with some of those ideas. Um, I will say that, you know, the episodes of Fuller were long. Um, I, I, I don't know if I needed it to be that long. Like, I, I could have probably shaved off a nice 10 minutes of this and tightened it up a little bit. Uh, this is a problem we come back to time and time again with streaming shows, is that there is no channel slot so they're allowed to be as long as they feel like uh, you know as long as they have made the show within the budget they were told to make it in if they have got more minutes out of their budget then they can use those minutes to their heart's content and i don't necessarily always think that they you know they, they should have necessarily and admittedly like what would i cut out of this first episode i don't necessarily have like a an obvious go-to answer for that um, some of the supporting cast, I, there's like a little group of like older journalists who help her out, who help out Vivian that is, at her job, who, she, she's kind of breaking the rules, she's not supposed to be taking this, this case, she's meant to be working on something else, but they all kind of support her, uh, she, I can't remember what she calls it, but it's basically she's been relegated by like her superior to like this back end of the office, and it's like, that's where all the old journalists who have no value go, and are just sort of told to go there until they leave. Uh, and she's, like, much younger than them, right? So it's kind of this insulting thing. But they're all very nice and, like, give her advice and help her out. They have a bit of wit back and forth. Not all of it necessarily, I, I think, landed. You know, there's at one point, I think one of them s says, oh, you know, I don't know if you realize this, but you've got a baby about to fire out your coochie. Uh, that, that line kind of felt flat for me a bit. But the general vibe of all of them wanting to help her was actually kind of sweet. So that's kind of cool. Um... Uh, her boss is a bit of a dickhead, though, uh, and then her boss's boss, the sort of the, the editor, whoever it is, um, he t is a bit more reasonable, but ultimately, like, ha there's this problem where she's supposed to be doing these other things, and she's sort of breaking the rules and doing her own thing because she sees it as more important, uh, and, it, you know, there's, uh, there's some topics brought up there, that there's some ideas brought up, it's... Yeah, it, it's kind of, I suppose the most interesting thing, other than the mystery of Anna, the most interesting thing about the show really is the general, uh, like, likability of a lot of the characters. Because th this could easily be a dark show with a lot of characters who are very serious and moody because it's a mystery about what someone was doing and are they innocent or not. Like, you could easily do a, a serious version of this, but it's not. It's supposed to be witty, it's supposed to be, have a light-hearted sort of feel to it, and the characters are meant to be, uh, you know, likable for the most part. And I think the most interesting thing is Vivian herself, 
she she's this very sort of down to earth like struggling writer or journalist who is kind of you know swimming upstream which is not unusual for this type of story necessarily like you see that a lot um but you know the like this is their last chance of success so this is the, the you know or if it's, if it's a cop it's like you know like they're, they're two days from retirement and they have to do this um but she feels like a lot more natural in that sense of swimming upstream and that she you know like she, she's about to sort of her life's about to change she's about to have a kid and you know six seven months whatever it is however long it is from your your first uh ultrasound but she's about to have a kid and she sees her, her life as she knows it sort of ticking away and she wants to fix it because she she feels that she messed it up we don't we don't get a lot of details as to how she messed it up in this first episode but there is like some hints of like some, some story she worked on went bad and something happened and we kind of like get some seeds of that so i'm sure that's something that will be revealed over the course of the season but she has a very natural kind of desperation where it feels relatable enough. It feels like she's, you know, she has to take the bus to the prison to go and speak to Anna. And there's a lot of, you know, her, the awkward waiting for that and feeling like, you know, and there's the moments where Anna gets really hot and tight and says, you know, what are you wearing? You, you look like a poor person <laughs> and things like that. And she gets a little offended, but not in like a over the top way. She kind of like, Kind of like, okay, this Anna girl is a bit weird and like, I'm not going to take that too seriously. But there is a bit of a, you know, these little moments that make her feel like a very down to earth kind of, you know, schlub, as it were. And schlub is probably a bit harsh, but schlubby in comparison to the, the ultra slick, like badasses who normally take this role. You know, if I compare it to like, other famous journalist characters, if you compare it to Lois Lane, Lois Lane is usually quite clumsy and like has a lot of wit in other ways. But Lois Lane never comes across necessarily as frumpy. She's always, like, very professional and, and slick when it comes to the actual journalistic parts. Um, and you can translate that to a lot of other professions and, and stories like this, you know, whether it be mysteries, thrillers... Not that this is a thriller, but, you know, it, it could be. It could very easily be a thriller if it just had a darker tone. Um, it, you know, they, I feel like they, they tend to be really good at what they do and then, like, their personal life's a mess or something like that. Whereas, no, like, she kind of shows up, like, to these interviews looking like, you know... Uh, she already kind of looks like a mum who's, like, had to drop off her kids first and then come to the interview. Uh, she feels like a real person. And I, I mean that in the sincerest, nicest possible way I can. Um, she feels real. So, I, I think that's a credit to, to it, if nothing else. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't even feel like I need to talk about any spoilers, because honestly... Like I say, like a lot of first episodes, it needs to set up the show. Uh, the biggest thing that happens at the end in terms of like closing out what this first episode is, is Anna deciding to not take the plea. And I don't think that's a spoiler because that's the whole show, is that she's going to go down this path. Uh, that's the that's the premise of the season. So yeah, I don't think that's uh, even spoiling anything. Um, yeah, but just a, maybe a little bit on the long side. And ultimately, it's just not something that I see myself getting super into. It's the sort of thing that I would maybe have on the background whilst I'm doing stuff. Like, it'd be an easy thing to just sort of keep putting on the next episode while I'm working on something. And I'd probably find it nice enough like that. I'd never review, review it like that, though. Like, I'm not reviewing something I'm only paying half attention to. And that sounds like a bit of a backhanded compliment. But that this is just based purely on my taste. It's just based purely on it's not really for me. But I think the audience that this is for will probably enjoy it and find it to be witty and, you know, and enjoy kind of the the type of character it's poking fun at. Um, I mean, if they come out and say that the character is based on Tommy Wiseau and there's going to be more Tommy Wiseau parallels, that may drag me back in. <laughs> that would maybe drag me back in. Uh, but yeah, she doesn't always sound like Tommy Wiseau, but there's just certain lines where she sounds really Tommy Wiseau. And that's really funny. And if you don't know who Tommy Wiseau is, go look up The Room from 2002, or maybe 2003, either way, but and and have a blast. Enjoy yourself. Uh, let me know what you think of the show, uh, the first episode, or if you watch the rest of it, you know, do let me know uh, how the whole thing is. Like, subscribe, ding the bell for notifications, all those things do help out a lot. Um, I'm still working through All of Us Are Dead, expect another one of those. Ho I'm hoping another one over the weekend, but I've got a lot, very busy weekend of editing ahead of me, so uh, I'm not feeling super confident on that. But uh, we'll be back, back with episode 7 of that as quickly as I can, and uh, obviously there's other stuff coming uh, over on the Mail Fuzz Movies channel where all the movie podcasts live. 
uh, that's what I'm editing, actually, most of this weekend. So uh, go and have a look and see if you're interested. You can also support everything we do over at patreon.com slash TV for as little as a dollar per month and get some uh, bonuses for your trouble. Help keep all the content coming. But otherwise, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. I always appreciate it. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla? <laughs>